All right, so this week didn't quite go as planned. I had originally wanted to create a video about stands, and the only thing I managed to get was the thumbnail image. So a lot of things caused this. I got a little bit in my head about production value. I had some lighting issues. I stumbled and some stuff broke, and it was all just generally frustrating. Um, but I wanted to keep creating and keep sharing what I'm doing on YouTube. So here's kind of an unscripted, unedited, blah, um, <laughs> and uh, we'll kind of see what happens. Um, in true fashion, I decided to stick to my roots and do kind of an unboxing as a sort of retail therapy. And right before this video arrived, um, I got a package. This is the ATEM Mini Pro um, by Blackmagic. And uh, essentially I got this both to use on YouTube for future live views if all, I don't know, handful of you that are following me right now want to talk to me live. Um, but more so I got this as a way to showcase what I'm doing in the studio from multiple camera angles and have it accessible live to a client um, because I don't know exactly how long we're going to be in these quarantined set situations. Um, so after doing some research, uh, the A10 Mini popped up as a really cool way to integrate multiple video feeds and share them out via a single source and it was back ordered everywhere. <laughs> And luckily enough, the timing worked out that the A10 Mini Pro came out and it has a feature that the A10 Mini didn't have, which is multi-view. So I can kind of have a command center and see what all those sources are before sending them out. Plus I can um, output directly from an ethernet port and go live straight from this and save some of the processing power of my computer for actually photographing and having a tethered shoot. So this is kind of an investment in a long-term live streaming strategy and hopefully it works out. And to distract myself from the crappy week I've been having, I figured I'll open it up and uh, kind of talk you through the process. All right, so I've got my trusty little slicer open here. And um, I have a top angle. Hopefully it works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, we'll see. Um, now that the plastic wrap is off, I can kind of show you the neat packaging. Um, lovely graphics all around, so you can kind of see what it does. Software control. Um, it looks like it's being advertised to gamers. Um, connect different things. Multi-view is kind of the huge new thing with this device. Um, and it seems pretty straightforward, uh, but from what I've done my research on and looking at different live streaming YouTube tech reviews, it's kind of a beast. So um, I'm not gonna claim to be an expert right away. So I'll do some tests in the next couple of weeks and maybe you'll see me live, maybe you won't. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So now let's open this up. All right, so open that up. You got a cute little welcome package. Ooh, stickers, everybody loves stickers. Um, I have so many stickers from different brands. I might do kind of a fun little collage of them. It's been kind of a back burner idea. Um, so Blackmagic Design, represent. Let's see what happens, put you aside. Got a little welcome package, software. Oh, they used to have it on an SD card and now they don't. That's kind of interesting. Um, free DaVinci Resolve. I haven't tried that out yet. I'm still using Final Cut. Um, and I have Premiere because I have Creative Suites. Uh, I'm not using it yet because I'm a little bit overwhelmed by it. Um, all right, let's get rid of this stuff for now and get to the good stuff. All right. This feels like a box of goodies and the actual A10 Mini is right here. Da -da -da -da. Let's move that aside. Lovely little neoprene. And there we have it. Nice and neat. Cute little buttons. 
the 10 Mini Pro. And uh, that's kind of exciting. Um, let's see what's in box number two. So um, yeah, I'm probably just gonna do a live unedited version of this in the sense of I'm kind of frustrated enough that I don't want to go into Final Cut. So I'll probably put this in a one fell swoop video and probably delete it later when I'm having a better week, hopefully. All right, so there's really not a lot in this. Sorry if that's really loud. People like ASMR, right? I did that in a couple of videos. So we've got world travel adapters. Won't be doing much of that anytime soon. Stick to just the US. And power. Okay, so that's it. So we've got power and a box. And I can't really show you exactly what it does since I'm just recording regularly. Um, stay tuned for some tests once I figure out how this works. Uh, I'm planning to use this with a cute little external monitor and I'll be able to source things like front camera, top camera, um, my computer if I have a tethered session, and maybe even a fourth one, we'll see. Um, I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet. Maybe kind of like camera settings if I'm shooting direct to a camera uh, for tutorial purposes. If I'm doing kind of a set streaming, um, it'll probably be overall wide angle shot from far away, um, computer so they can see the tethered settings and camera view. Uh, and maybe I'll connect my iPad to it. We'll, we'll see. Um, there's a lot of maybes right now, but I'm looking forward to adding the A10 Mini Pro to my workflow um, and sharing it with you. So that was my simple little unboxing. And uh, yeah, hopefully next week will be better <laughs> and I will get back to editing the outstanding video I have planned for you guys. Um, I didn't want to half-ass it to get it ready by Saturday, but at the same time, I didn't want to give up on uploading on a consistent basis. So hopefully it works out. Hopefully it doesn't turn you off from randomness. Um, yeah. So shiny new toy, feels really cool. Um, lots of possibilities and we'll see what happens. Okay, so after I wrapped my unboxing of the A10 Mini Pro, um, I kind of got an unexpected unboxing opportunity and uh, it's more of an unbagging. Um, so if you've seen a few of my videos, towards the end of the blooper reel, you'll see the lights cutting out. Um, that's because up until now, um, and even for this video, I've been using the modeling light of my Profoto B10s as video lights because they have bicolor LEDs. Um, now, for some reason, they keep shutting off after 15 minutes, even though I've turned off all the standby settings. In reality, it's a more powerful LED than something like a little pocket light, um, but it's not designed for long-term video shoot. It's a flash. A strobe and it's a great one at that because it's portable I can plug it in it works in the studio anyway I'm rambling about the b10 when I should be rambling about the new thing that I just got so I got the aperture 300x and it just arrived so hopefully no more blackouts all right and this is what just arrived uh, the aperture 300x in a beautiful case, uh, very much my aesthetic, all gray <laughs> with a hint of red. Um, it's like they knew this is what I wanted. Um, it barely fits in the top-down view, so we'll see what happens. Um, let me just open her up, show you what's inside. And hopefully going forward, we will have better lit videos that last longer than a couple of minutes at a time. 
there's also been some noise issues, so I don't know if it's picking that up in this current microphone setup. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, the carbon fiber looks really neat. Cooling. I'm not sure why they made the fans yellow um, when all of their accents are red. I feel like that's a missed opportunity to have a pop of red instead of a pop of yellow, but mm, who knows. So um, what do you say we try it out? All right, so I've taken it out of the packaging and set up kind of a little tabletop stand so we can kind of see what we're working with. We've got the ballast, um, I mean, it's plugged in and the light is on the stand and let's see what it looks like when we turn it on. Whoa, that's bright. <laughs> okay, so let me not blind the camera for a second and to show you kind of what it looks like, I'm gonna turn off so just as a point of comparison, this is overhead light plus a fill. And then this is the 300X. Whoa. And this is at 50%. So let me just angle that up there. So this is pointing straight up now, bouncing 50% pretty incredible at the brightness. Um, the overhead camera looks phenomenal now because there's actually enough brightness in the room. Um, and it's only at half power. So if I walk it up to the full, let's take a look at what happens. Wow, this is incredibly bright. <laughs> My room is never this bright, even in the daytime. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's currently 6,500 Kelvin. Let's change the mood warm things up pretty phenomenal super tungsten light um, and we can dim it down if we want to and wow this is awesome so let's switch you back up to sure 5600 Kelvin I think that's what my white balance is set to and just bouncing onto a white ceiling it's pretty incredible if I aim it at my key light it'll kind of bounce it right back at me. It's um, even brighter, so let's tune it way down. So with one light at 18% power, I can achieve kind of the same results I was able to do with two lights um, on full power with the Pro Photos. This is why I kind of invested in this light long-term purchase. I'm excited to kind of see where it goes. Um, I'm happy to not have to stop every few minutes when these things shut off. Um, hopefully the volume level is pretty low. I have it right next to the microphone right now, so you might hear some of the fan, but it's actually a lot quieter than the fans in the B10. So once I get it further away, I think we'll be okay. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in on this unexpected unboxing of the 300X. That's a lot of X's. Um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Bye.